Okay, let's continue our discussion. We move on to a generalized case for Rankine Active Pressure Granular Backfill. So for this one, uh, the relationship that was developed for Rankine Active Pressure for a retaining wall with a vertical back and a horizontal backfill. So that can be extended to a general case of a frictionless wall with inclined backs and inclined backfill. So this is a figure for the general case for a retaining wall with granular backfill. So if you're going to observe, we have here a retaining wall with a, uh, a vertical back and a horizontal backfill. So for this one, see the back is inclined at an angle theta with the vertical. So the back face of the retaining wall is inclined at an angle theta with the vertical. So the granular backfill is inclined. So this is our backfill. This is granular. Of course, it can be gravel, silt, or sand. The backfill is inclined also at a certain angle alpha with respect to the horizontal. So this illustration is a general case for a retaining wall with granular backfill. So basically, you have an inclined backfill and uh, an inclined backfill and of course an inclined back face of the retaining wall. So for that particular case, the Rankine active case, the lateral earth pressure can be at a certain depth can be given, can be solved through this equation. So uh, our psi is given with this uh, formula. So we just have to substitute the given values on our uh, values for certain parameters and of course this angle alpha phi and psi are uh, uh, located and it can be specified in this uh, figure and you have the placement or the position of each angle on this particular illustration for uh, the general case of a retaining wall with a granular backfill so the pressure which is a sigma sub a will be inclined at an angle beta sub a with a plane drawn at right angle to the back face of the wall. So our beta sub a, our beta sub a, this one. So if you're going to observe, this is the uh, active pressure that is acting on our uh, retaining wall. It is acting on the, it is acting in inclined position with beta sub a. And it is acting on the inclined back face of our retaining wall. And our beta sub A is given by this equation. So therefore, our active force, which is P sub A for a unit length of the wall, it can be calculated and compute or computed using this equation. So that is the active force per unit length of the wall, which is denoted by P sub A, is equal to one half gamma h squared times case of a. So our case of a for this one for the Rankine active pressure coefficient for the general case is this uh, equation. So this is the Rankine active earth pressure coefficient for the general case. In the location and direction of the resultant piece of a, as shown in our figure. And uh, it is also shown that the failure wedge, there is the failure wedge ABC. And we have to take note that BC is inclined at an angle eta, or eta is equivalent to this equation. So you have here the press, the position of our uh, uh, active pressure. And of course, our alpha, and you have your uh, theta. And so that is for the general case for a vertical, uh, for a retaining wall with a granular backfill. So let's move on to granular backfill with vertical back face of the wall. 
So for this one, a special case for a vertical back face of the wall where in our theta is equal to zero, uh, you can show it is shown in this figure. This is now uh, you have here the illustration for the location and direction of the Rankine active force. So this is our Rankine active force piece of A, and it is inclined in position, which is making an angle of beta sub A. And of course, it is located at a certain distance h all over 3 from the bottom of the retaining wall. So if you're going to, uh, you have to take note of the position of our angle on the retaining wall and on the back field of the, of our, in this illustration. So of course, a while ago, we have uh, identified our eta, which is this one. So this is the angle of the uh, failure wedge, uh, which makes with the horizontal. So that is eta, and that can be computed using this equation. And of course, uh, uh, you just have to substitute the value for our parameters on our uh, equation eta, so that you can compute for this angle. So of course, for this uh, parameters, it is. Uh, located and given by uh, through this illustration so if the back face of the if the back field of a frictionless retaining wall is a granular soil you have to take note c prime is equal to zero and rises at an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal the active earth pressure coefficient can be expressed with this one so this is the the Rankine active earth coefficient if our if the backfill of the frictionless retaining wall is a granular uh, soil wherein our C prime or the cohesion is equal to zero and it rises at an angle with respect to the horizontal. So this is the illustration for a retaining wall having a backfill that is granular. So of course we have here our piece of A, the active uh, force it makes an angle alpha with the horizontal and it is acting at a certain distance h all over three from the bottom of the retaining wall so to compute for our Rankine active force for that we have here our uh, formula so this is the Rankine active pressure so gamma times z times k sub a of course k sub a is this one and of course, for the total force per unit length of the wall is, of course, this is given by this expression, 1 half gamma times h squared times k of a. So we have here different values for our uh, case of a. Of course, you just have to take note of the given alpha, theta, and uh, the p prime so that you can have the value for case of, case of a. So we have to take note that in this case, the direction of the resultant force, P sub A, of course, that is inclined with the, uh, it is inclined in position, it makes an angle of alpha with respect to the horizontal. So let's move on to Rankine active pressure with vertical wall back face and inclined soil back face. So for this one, meaning to say, we're going to have the computation for the act, Rankine active pressure when our back face, the back face of the uh, retaining wall is vertical and you have an inclined soil back field. So for that one, according to uh, uh, Mazindrani and Ganjali, they is, this is the formula to compute for the active pressure uh, for our Vertical with a retaining vertical wall uh, and an inclined uh, soil backfield. So you have gamma times z times k sub a, or it can be expressed with gamma times z times k sub a cosine alpha. And of course, our k sub a is this. Uh, for, this is the formula to compute for our k sub a. And we have here different values for k sub a. We just have to, using this table, you have to know the value for our alpha and the phi prime so that you can have the value for 
case of A. So this is also a tabulation so that we can have the value for case of A. We just need the value for phi prime, your alpha, and the ratio between cohesion over the uh, unit weight and the uh, depth, which is gamma times A. And for that one, there are, for the given value for case of A, so we can compute now for that particular type of problem, we can compute for the tensile crack. So for the tensile crack, the equation for the computation of the tensile crack is this. Uh, we are given with this formula. So of course, for this case, the active pressure is inclined at an angle alpha with the horizontal. So if we're going to have a sample problem for this one, uh, try to refer to the retaining wall shown in figure 12.9. So the figure 12.9 is, this is our figure for that particular problem. So if you're going to observe, you have an inclined back face of the retaining wall, you have an inclined back fill, and of course, you have the total force per unit length, which is an inclining position having uh, at a certain distance a over 3 from the bottom of the retaining wall. So for that particular figure, having this uh, parameter is given. So the backfill is granular soil. We are given with the height of the wall, 10 feet. The theta is positive 10 degrees. This is the angle of the inclined back face of the retaining wall. It makes with, that make it makes which makes with the vertical axis, and of course the back field having an alpha uh, is fifteen degrees, P is thirty five degrees, C prime is equal to zero, and uh, unit weight is one hundred ten pounds per cubic feet. So for this one, we just have to compute for the Rankine active force, piece of A, and its location and direction. So basically, from our uh, from this problem, we can find the value for case of A, our coefficient of the active uh, Rankine active earth coefficient for having a backfill of a granular soil. So we can use the table presented a while ago, which is a table. Uh, 12.1 so we just have to identify our value for alpha which is 15 degrees and uh, theta is 10 degrees so basically from table 12.1 so this is table 12.1 we have to identify that our uh, given values so Identify the alpha, the theta, you have 15 degrees and 10 degrees for the beta, the theta. Alpha is 15, theta is 10 degrees. So uh, what would be the value for our, uh, and they are given with phi, which is 35. Of course, if alpha is 15, so you have your 15, if theta is 10 so that would be 15 and 10 this is 10 for and if phi is 35 we don't have 50 or we don't have the value for 35 so meaning to say you're going to have we only have values 34 and 36 you're going to interpolate so interpolate the value for our case of a uh, upon interpolation it is based on the solution the value for case of A is zero, approximately 0 0.42. So since we have now the value for case of A, you can compute now for our active uh, pressure, active, uh, active total force, which is 1 half gamma H squared times case of A. And basically for this one, you simply have to substitute the given values for gamma, H, and case of A, and that gives us the total force per unit length of the wall is 2,310 pounds per uh, feet. 